Welcome everyone. In this lesson, we will talk about the if let construct in Rust. And this is the last lesson on the chapter about pattern matching in Rust. We had one lesson about enums, one lesson about the match statement, my favorite one. You can also see this on the screen, the match, a match statement. So if you don't know what the match statement is, check the previous lesson. Today we'll talk about a very simple construct called if let that can simplify the code in some cases. We start from here. We have this function main. We define a variable, which is an option. I talked about the option in the enhance lesson. And then we used the match statement. But you see here we have a match statement that has only one arm. An arm in a match is like a case in a switch, so it's one possibility. And then basically what you see on line 6 is in any other cases, just do nothing. This is exactly what this, this does mean. You see, even GitHub Copilot says ignore the case where config max is known. Okay, and if I run this code here with cargo run, Usually I add the dash Q so I avoid some verbose output when I do cargo run. We have the max is configured to be 100 because we define this variable. We assigned this value 100. Okay, this is an option because uh, maybe we want uh, to be sure that this is uh, 100, but it can also be known in some cases. What's the problem here? The problem here is that uh, maybe a match statement is a bit too much because uh, we have only one arm and the other one is says okay in the other case just nothing can we write this code in a more simple way the answer of course is uh, yes and we can use uh, we can use an if let statement we can do something like this I want to remove the else for now because uh, we'll do another example later and uh, that's it. This if let sum, in this case, will print uh, this. So it's very similar to a simple if statement. Basically, we have what we had in an arm in a match statement. Let's try to run this. Cargo run dash Q. Okay, the print statement is a bit different, but it's basically it does the same thing. When can I use it? This is one of the one of the examples. The cool thing is that I can also use in this case something similar to what I use with a, when I do an if statement. So for example, I can even do a, an else. Now in the enums lesson, we, we did an example. We had this enum with coins. Let's do another example example number two we have we had an enum it doesn't have to be in the main i prefer to have the num outside and we had an, an enum with coins penny nickel dime and quarter and then if you remember in an enum, the enums in rust are very powerful and for example we can have an enum that has some values here even another enum which is super powerful we can have an enum about the rarity of the coin. I think we had the, the exa this exact example. We can allow the code. Uh, something like this. Okay. Just to avoid, uh, avoid the <laughs> warnings. Okay. We have this enum with coin. Then we have this enum about a rarity. And for example, in the case of the quarter, I can have here the rarity. So I have these two enums. One with the coin and one for the rarity. In the main function, I can define a coin, let coin, like this. And in case I have a quarter, I will print out the rarity. Otherwise, not. So, for example, I don't need a match statement, but I want to do here an if let statement. If the coin is of the type quarter, I print this quarter is this. We'll see why we have an error here. Otherwise, we can, for example, print this is not a quarter. Why do we have um, an error here? It's a small error because Rarity doesn't implement the bug. So we can solve this here, derive the bug. 
Here we defined a coin of type quarter of rarity epic. So let's try to print this out, cargo run dash q, and it prints this quarter is a epic. Okay, it's not exactly perfectly grammarly exact, but it's okay. Now let's say that instead of a quarter, I create another coin. For example, if I type, if I get a penny, let coin equal coin penny, for example, here, something like this, cargo run dash q. In this case, I get the else statement. So you see, it's very powerful. And I think it's, uh, it's great when we have a single expression we want to match. So in some cases, we want to match multiple. To be honest, I think that usually we want to match multiple uh, uh, patterns. But I don't know, maybe in some, in some case, maybe in this case, for example, I want to match only for the rarity of a single um, case, for example, of, only in the case of the quarter. It's worth mentioning that we have uh, this uh, state this statement this construct in rust super simple basically what, what we are trying to do is to avoid avoid having a match statement with only one arm and a default one that's the main goal of the of the if let statement also it can be very useful when we have for example the option t the option t is used basically to handle null values in rust when we have like just some or none and then in this in this case i think an if let statement as we did the, in the previous example can be useful in case i have a match statement with only one arm i think it's uh, recommended to use this uh, this if let instead what do you think do you like it or not can it be i think it might be a bit confusing especially for beginners because uh, Understand if let uh, doesn't make much much sense. Usually after if uh, you expect uh, like a boolean expression. Instead here we have if and then let and then a pattern matching. This is the only downside that uh, for a person who is new to Rust uh, can be a confusing construct because it starts with if. Uh, so probably I would expect here a boolean condition. This is not uh, uh, this is not a, um, a boolean condition. This is uh, a pattern matching of this uh, coin uh, quarter. So it is okay. I have a coin of type quarter with a certain rarity. And this is the the end of the chapter about uh, pattern matching in Rust. Again, we did enums, match, and if let. So we are done with another very important module in the Rust uh, uh, tutorial series. Fun fact, the next lesson will be about modules. So we'll see crates, uh, how to organize uh, our code in multiple files, how to import them. So I think that and that's that will be useful because because to be honest, uh, so far we just uh, used a single file, this main.rs file. We never used multiple files or imported, but of course Rust gives us the opportunity to do it.